Welcome to the Get Trauma Informed podcast, dedicated to unraveling the complexities of trauma, its pervasive impact, and the journey towards holistic recovery and realignment. If your radiance has ever felt muted, like I and thousands of others, you're in the right place to reignite your inner light. I'm your host, wellness coach Liz Blanding, and this is the Get Trauma Informed podcast. Well, on today's episode, we have Mr. Mark Burnett um, here, and I am really, really excited about him joining us today in this conversation on the Get Trauma Informed platform. One of the the things that I that I think is so amazing is when you meet someone and they have such positive energy, and you know you can just you can just feel it. And so, Mark, how are you today? Yes, I am. Um, fabulous. I'm feeling great, you know, today, uh, just the starting of a new week. Um, it was a restful, um, weekend where I just took some time off uh, with nature to just relax and, uh, to prepare, um, for a new week. Wow. That's great. That's great. Let's talk a little bit about who Mark is before we get into the actual conversation. He is the author of the Ambidextrous Project Manager book, um, and he is also known as the reasoner, right? And, you know, as we get, as we start walking through this conversation, I'm sure you will be able to experience exactly what I experienced when I first met with Mark, you know, um, like I said, when you meet good people, it's just, you know, something that I love to share with the world. Mark, can you tell us a little bit about what is it that you like to do? Like you said, it was a relaxed, you know, that's what I got from you too. You know how the world is so busy, busy, busy. We're busy. And when I left our conversation, I have to admit, I said, wow, that was an experience. It wasn't just a conversation. It was an experience. I felt like I was, you know, had been been ushered into a peaceful space. So I thank you for that. So can you tell us a little bit about you know, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, um, sure, Liz. So, yeah, my name is uh, Mark Burnett. You know, healed all the way out of um, Kingston, Jamaica. You know, born, you know, raised um, in Kingston, Jamaica. You know, I, I, I studied uh, here as well, you know. And so, um, you know, uh, my journey um, pretty much started, you know, when I left um, the university um, as an engineer, you know, and um, in the early 2000s, there was a boom in the, the Caribbean market, you know, telecommunication, the ICT space, you know. Um, but then we did have um, these, you know, I technology enabled um, phones, you know, the 2G, the 3G, you know. Uh, we didn't know anything about that. And so, yeah, that's where my uh, career pretty much started, you know, in the Caribbean, you know, just um, working on some of these um, projects, you know, across the the, the region. And then just, um, you know, like fast forward, you know, um, some years later, I was in a a serious um, accident, you know, where I was (laughs) told that, you know, my arm should have been um, amputated. And so I, I I rebelled against that, you know, and I would say it's 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 pretty much because of my rebellion and my and my resilience, you know, I am lucky enough um, to have both arms um, today. Mm-hmm. So you know, after just going through that experience, you know, and just being in the hospital for months, you know, um, I can tell you, I mean, at the time. There was no, you know, I'm I'm resilient by nature, you know, but it was tough times in the in the in in the hospital, you know, without a job, you know, didn't know how you you were going to pay the bills and and and, and stuff like this, and so, um, yeah, just being in the hospital, you know, working closely with the doctors and just working closely with even um, new friends that I met. On the in, in inside the hospital there who had different traumatic um, situations, you know, and you know I would say you know in the hospital I I pretty much was running my life like a project manager without even knowing it, you know. Of course, 
you know, I didn't have sophisticated tools, project management tools or, you know, anything like that. But, you know, I believe um, the, the, the major part of project management is just communication and the emotional intelligence and the empathetic leadership that, that you would apply because you, most of the times you're dealing with the doctors and you're dealing with people and you're dealing with traumatic um, situations. So um, as a human being to a human being, um, you should be able to 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 manage and to 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 lead, navigate uh, those situations, you know. And so that's what I had to do. I had multiple surgeries, skin skin graft, bone graft, you know. And so eventually an opportunity um, popped up at the time, and they were not able to wait on me any longer. And so I had to leave the hospital and go right into um, a new opportunity. At the time, my arm. My right arm was in a fiberglass cast. You know, uh, what can I do? You know, I had to move on. So that's pretty much when the ambidextrous um, mindset, I would say, came into play because, you know, yes, you wanted to be there to heal 100%, but at the same time, life goes on. And you just have to tip everything in the balance, you know. And so, uh, that was what I did, you know, and yeah, I was able to use this ambidextrous mindset um, to impact, um, I would say, a lot of teams, you know, just people in life and um, the Caribbean and the Latin America community. Because, as I said, there was a boom in the telecommunication space. At that time, we didn't have 3G phones, we didn't have 4G phones, and now we have all of these things, digital technology. And even now, you know, um, persons are able to use data, you know, stream, use YouTube, all of that. And I believe um, this has had a positive impact on the, the culture and the community. So, yeah, it's just mm -hmm. that pretty much. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. You, you said you said so many wonderful nuggets there that we can, you know, take in and they're just you know, people can t torpedo off of into a, a, a greater, a better mindset, a more positive mindset. It's like when you said, when you're faced with that type of a, you know, a situation as far as like your arm, you know, and, and you had to, you know, think. And I think it was the positive thinking or the positive mindset that threw you into, wait, ambidextrous project manager, right? And we talked a little bit about life being a project and you jumped into project mode, uh, project management mode. Um, with that, you know, what does, and you talked a little bit about different people and different stories of trauma. And so with that, um, what does get trauma informed? What does that mean to you? Yeah. So I would say, you know, as an ambidextrous project manager, you know, because um, that's what I call myself from, from, from this life experience. And as the author of the ambidextrous project manager and an expert in the ambidextrous thinking, I believe, you know, getting trauma informed means just like understanding and recognizing the wide impact of trauma on individuals and communities. Because <laughs> we are all going through something, you know, um, there, there is this saying here in the Caribbean that says, Rain, rain falls and everyone's roof, you know, it's always something. Everyone is going through something. And that something has some kind of trauma attached to it um, most of the times, if not all of the time, you know. And I would also say trauma informed, it involves like gaining knowledge about the signs and symptoms of trauma and adapting practices that uh, could promote safety, trustworthiness and empowerment um, for persons, you know, for, for, for communities, you know, because if you don't allow yourself to be aware of the signs, the symptoms, you know, or whatever is happening, it's very difficult to, to help and to, to find solution as a collective, you know, to, to, to deal with the matter, you know. And, you know, as I said before, even from a project management um, context, everything in life is a project. And even this trauma-informed 
um, situation, it does require some level of project management too. And that requires, you know, just creating an environment where people can feel supported and understood and ensure that their emotional and psychological well-being is considered, you know, alongside whatever it is that they are doing, whether that might be in a personal realms or a professional realms, you know, it's just to create that kind of inclusive environment to support. And then the holistic approach of this would enhance like the collaboration and the creativity and the resilience um, within the relationship that we have with these persons and the community um, leading to more successful outcomes, you know, that has to do with, um, you know, trauma or trauma-informed, I would say. I love that. Yeah, I, I love that, uh, how you tied everything into a successful outcome and how there's more components in that um, a successful outcome than just, you know, the result of the project, but actually the health and well-being of the people that are performing the duties to get the uh, successful outcome. So that was just absolutely fantastic. Um, how has trauma empowered and inspired you? <laughs> Yeah, so like I said before, um, my journey um, says it all, you know, yeah. um, you know, being in a, a car accident, you know, and just being written off by all the medical facilities and being told that um, your arm should be amputated, you know, um, I think um, this is one of the most um one of the most challenging, you know, adversity that a, that a human being can can overcome, you know. So I would say uh, this has empowered me to develop a deeper sense of resilience and determination. And w- within this deeper sense of resilience and determination, um, I think it has implemented this it has allowed me to embrace uh, my dualities as a person, you know, Um, as I said before, I mean, life, everything in life is a project. So we are all project managers. So even as a life project manager, it has allowed me to embrace my dualities, you know, just how I look at life um, or I look at um, the human being, you know, um, when someone approaches you, you know, just the conversations, you know, the listening, the critical listening, you know, and how you respond to them. You know, if they are going through a bad day, you know, how can you inspire them, you know, or how can you make them a better place or the community, you know, that kind of thing, you know. And I would also say, Even the challenges that I faced, you know, overcoming and trying to defy that 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 arm amputation, um, it has helped me to to balance like the analytical and creative aspects of problem solving in life, because problem solving, everything, life is a challenge just by living. You know, you will not go through smoothly. You know, everyone has a journey, everyone has a story. And so you need um, that problem solving um, skills, you know. And sometimes even though someone else's problem is not ours, we can help them to solve problems, even just by listening or just by showing up, just by smiling. Yes. Sending a simple message just by saying hello in a a kind way, you know. Right, right. it has inspired me, um, you know. Yes, your story. Yes, yes, your story and your book is so inspiring to me. 
you know, when you think about the resilience that it took and how you built that. And then, I mean, if you just like, I like for people to just sit with the ambidextrous project management, right? And see how many parts of that fit into our everyday life. You know, I mean, you inspired me to say, wow, you know, to look back, to even look at my journey and my accident. And sometimes when you're going through something, you are like too close in the picture to see the frame. So you don't see how much resilience it took, you know, but when you hear somebody else's story, like your story, it's, it, I, I, I do believe it's going to inspire, if not have already, like I said, it inspired me, but it's going to inspire and encourage other people to say, man, I mean, the odds that you were facing and you thought, like you said, analytically in the process of, wait a minute, you know, and I said it in my accident, this is not my destiny. It didn't resonate with me well, right? Not that I was trying to be rebellious and you weren't, you were thinking of, you know, like taking care of yourself, being that ambidextrous project manager, right? Sometimes we can, we can walk the walk, but it's like when we talk the talk, but like talk the talk and actually walk the walk and then to get such a successful outcome, you know, I I can commend you and applaud you for that. And then, you know, in, in, in bringing out the empowering, you know, sometimes when I ask, how is trauma empowered? And people think empowered, wait, or inspired. And your story is the epitome of what an inspiration and empowering, what it looks like, you know, when it's walked out. So again, I, I commend you for that. And I, you know, just a little, uh, a little, uh, a little plug here. I think everybody should go out and get this book so that we can all start applying this to our everyday life. Because as you walk through the book, every chapter is going to inspire you a little bit more. And sometimes when you're when you're faced with a big, a big, like a, what do they say, how you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Well, that's what the book does. It shows you the whole picture. And then each chapter is going to help you to get further and further along so that you can have that healthy outcome to your goals. So again, I applaud you for writing the book. And, you know, hey, y'all go out and get that book. We're going to put the information down in our in our in our show notes so that you can make sure that you connect and purchase the book. Um, yeah. So as we continue to, like, talk about your story, Mark, again, you know, such an inspiration. What would you say to somebody else that was that was facing trauma that other than like I just said, go get the book. But what else would you say to somebody else that was facing trauma? Um. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Imagine driving down the road, enjoying a beautiful day when suddenly a tree jumps out in front of your car. Crash! In an instant, your life is flipped upside down, both physically and psychologically. That was my reality. I'm Liz Blanding, a certified holistic wellness and trauma recovery coach. In a time when, according to the National Center for PTSD, the epidemic of trauma is on the rise, 70% of adults in the U.S. have experienced some type of traumatic event at least once in their lives. That's 223.4 million people who could benefit from support on their journey to recovery. To address this, I launched the Get Trauma Informed podcast in March 2024. Our podcast offers free information, resources, expert advice, and stories of those who have overcome trauma and shifted from surviving to thriving. The podcast has the capacity to reach hundreds of thousands of people. I believe that by partnering with the Get Trauma Informed podcast, we can provide critical support to many more people who need it. Trauma was not their fault, but recovery is their responsibility. And with your support, we can help them to achieve it. Thank you for considering the partnership opportunity. I look forward to the possibility of working together to make a significant impact on trauma recovery. Email us at info at oasiswellnesctrs.com or contact us at 616 616- Three two zero zero seven zero three. Now we will return to our Get Trauma Informed conversation. I would say, like, the journey will 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 will, will, will may seem like insurmountable, you know, but um, I would say it's essential to remember that you possess an inner strength that can guide you through the toughest times, you know? And sometimes that might come across like a, like a cliche, but it's just what it is. It's just um, 
what it is. And um, you will realize that sometimes when you're in this kind of situation, um, I know the pain that you will be feeling. And sometimes you can feel like you're in a lonely place, but you're also feeling growth. There's some kind. Of, there's a lot of growth um, in this process as well. It's 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 a process that you're going through. It will not last forever, you know. It's a process, you know. And I would say acknowledge your feelings and seek support from those around you. You know, I mean, we all have different personalities. We all have our pride, you know, and sometimes it could be difficult to reach out for help uh, with a friends, family, you know, or, you know, professionals. But it's also what it is, you know, and you just have to embrace your experiences as a part of your story, you know, and this will shape you into someone who will have a big impact on the future that is ahead of you, you know? Because in my case, I didn't know that I would have written a book and give it that kind of twist from trauma into project management. I didn't know that. I didn't know that I would have taken some underrated um, skill sets from this situation and plug it into my professional um, area um, to be impacting in the way that I'm doing. You know, I didn't know that. And in the future, I can speak now because I'm in the future, you know, right. and that's what is happening, you know. And just also remember that the resilience is not about bouncing back to where you were, but about moving forward to where you can be stronger and more capable um, before. Yes. And so, yeah, that's, 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 that's what I would, would, would definitely say. Wow. That is so powerful. I love that. Not just that the bouncing, you know, I'm visual. So I just, I just visualized that. And I was like, wow, that's, that's absolutely amazing. I think that's all a part of what you talk about and what you discuss when you talk about emotional intelligence, you know, how it can, it can propel us to see that, you know, that you're, you're in this at this moment, but tomorrow, and then the next day, and as we continue to build, it's going to get better. And it's going to, you know, you're going to look back on it. Like I never could have said, could have thought for a million years that I would be doing a podcast on trauma. You know, my family was like, why are you talking about this? My family kept saying, why are you doing this? You know? And so <laughs> I had to build some other people around me to say, no, it's a good thing that you are doing this. So many people need to hear these messages. Like, you know, people need to hear your story and how many people, you know, would be on the brink of like giving up, but then they hear your story of, you know, your, your, you know, your arm and how, you know, they're, they're telling you, you, you know, they, they need to amputate your arm, but you know, you knew that there was something different. I knew that there was a different, I said, this is not my destiny. And so your destiny now you're, you know, the ambidextrous project manager, that is so profound to me. And you're an author and you're getting the message out and, you know, people are being able to build chapter by chapter by chapter and not, then understand. So a lot of people don't understand what is emotional intelligence? What does that mean if they've never been exposed to it? Right. Yes, yes, yes. Because, yeah, I mean, um, I totally agree. And um, when we had the, our first conversation over the weekend, we, we, we did touch on that as well. And. You know, again, I will say, you know, trauma has also heightened my empathy and understanding personally, you know, allowing me to connect with human beings uh, more deeply, you know, who have faced uh, similar struggles, you know, because as I said, we're all going through something, you know, and um, if you don't have the experience sometimes, it's very difficult to relate or to be able to connect in some way, shape, or form. You understand? So, you know, the emotional intelligence and the empathy, you know, 
uh, that and, and 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 all that comes with the understanding you know that, that that will allow you to 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 connect with other persons who are going through um something you know and that's how you're able to help them because if you're not able to understand what they're going through then it's difficult to give any kind of um support and um you know um life too is about um growth it's about learning and growth and so i believe trauma does provides a lot of personal growth that fuels the human being to do amazing things and especially now you know we're living in a complex world you know i mean nothing is easy you know um that growth generally helps you to problem solve in a different way yes 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 um dr fraser he talked about dr george fraser he talked about what you just said about life being hard choose your heart right he said, you know, weight gain is hard, but but exercising is hard. So choose your heart. And I love, again, I'll go back to uh, the ambidextrous project management because it is about, you know, our life being a project and how are we empowering ourselves to manage that project well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, I just see the impact on, on so many people. I can't wait to hear the feedback on this, you know, you know, as far as while, you know, I'll be able to give you the feedback and let you know what people are saying. And I know they're going to be buzzing like I was. I was talking about you and your book. I was talking about you all over the weekend, even in our family events saying, you know, wow, I love to meet people that are inspirational and that that have an encouraging story and that have overcome and, you know, and are still moving forward in their resiliency. So thank you so much for sharing your story. Is there anything else that you'd like to leave the listeners with today? Yes, um, so I would just say, um, you know, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, you know, persons will, you know, use the word like um, trauma, you, you know, and over the years, I just personally, I see trauma as just one of those um, struggles that we will face as a human being that will help us to grow and impact our our community in a in a better way you know so a lot of times instead of using the word trauma i will use one of the many challenges that we will face in life that will help us to impact our communities in a better way because sometimes when you speak to someone who has a traumatic situation and maybe, or for example, if you mention the word trauma to them, it could worsen the situation, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I've seen situations where I have motivated someone by just substituting the word trauma with one of the many challenges that will help you to grow and impact the society in a better way. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're getting the message out to get trauma informed so, so we can live a better life or so we can get over, a, a, like you said, a specific challenge or so that we can walk, you know, by faith and not fear. So we can, you know, so we can, right? So we're not just stuck in that I, I, I'm in trauma and just be sitting there stuck. No, it's so we can be resilient and overcome that and we can get on to the better life, which is in our destiny. So I so thank you so much for bringing us this message all the way from Jamaica today. And I just appreciate, you know, your spirit and everything that you're doing. And I look forward to, you know, further conversations, communications, and even you've been a, a, another, you know, having another guest spot on the Get Trauma Informed podcast. So again, I thank you so much for the work that you're doing and listeners make sure that you go out and get the ambidextrous project management management manager make sure that you yeah. get the book and we'll put the links down in our description and everybody have a wonderful wonderful day and again thank you so much for joining me today 
Thank you so much. Likewise, thank you so much, Liz. Um, it's been wonderful, you know, just getting to know you and um, just sharing my experiences um, on your platform. And I am sure it will be of um, help, support um, to many um, out there. Thank you. Bye for now. It's time to buckle up. No more suffering in silence. Our power pack journey to recovery and realignment starts now. Remember, you were collateral damage on someone else's warpath. Trauma is not your fault. Recovery, however, is your responsibility. I'm your host, wellness coach Liz Blanding, and this is the Get Trauma Informed Podcast. <laughs>